My Lords, I rise to offer very strong Green su Group support to this amendment, um, although acknowledging the questions about whether the easiest thing is just not to th throw the whole thing out. But it's a great honour to follow such three such powerful speeches from such distinguished campaigners. I just want to pick up the one point, um, Clause C here, um, the experience of LGBTIQA plus people. And like the noble Lord, Lord Cashman, I'm drawing on the, um, the, the very important, I think, briefing from Rainbow Migration. And in that, there's the story of Samir, a gay man from Kosovo. And we're obviously talking about someone who sought some asylum some years ago. He knew there was no way that um, he could live openly as a gay man in Kosovo at that time, and even now it's recognised as an incredibly dangerous place for LGBTIQA plus people. Mm. Samir said, I quote, I felt like every day I had to look over my shoulder because he never knew what could happen. And Samir was attacked. He came here um, under a different visa category, didn't know that he could apply for asylum, eventually found his way through the system. And then he spoke about the experience of talking, and he said, I quote, it was the first time talking about my sexuality. Just saying aloud the word gay in Albanian, it was very surreal. I knew that although I was scared, this was my only chance. Now, I ran through that story because in the previous group, the noble lady, the minister, uh, said that, well, there will be guidance that, uh, you know, without delay, might allow for circumstances such as this. But I want to point the noble lady, the minister, and if she hasn't seen it, I would be very happy to share it with her, another report from um, Rainbow Migration, uh, titled Still Falling Short, that talks about how difficult it still is for LGBTIQA plus people to prove their sexual orientation or gender identity to the Home Office. Now, if people are finding it very difficult to prove, quote unquote, then how difficult is it going to be to get this consideration that the noble lady, the minister, referred to before? And I just want to make one other brief point, and this is drawing on a, um, uh, a briefing from the Law Society, and it would perhaps be an additional clause to the noble lady, Baroness Lister's um, amendment, because the Law Society points out that often people will not talk about what's happened to them because they fear what might happen to family or associates back in the country that they fled. Now, I think that's something we've really got to consider, because if you've been you know, subject to persecution, you all almost invariably will know people still who, if you tell the story and that story gets out, they'll be in grave danger. And there really should be consideration of that also in the guidance.